Hi, I'm Jim Murray. I'm the head coach of the Front Range Volleyball Club. And we had a viewer request um, sent to us by one of the VTS members. And he asked us about using basketballs to train our setters. So we thought we'd bring in our two 18-1 setters, Jordan Poulter, August Rasky to kind of examine this idea of training basket, uh, training setters with a basketball. Um, this viewer thought um, that it might help strengthen the wrists and hands of the setters and develop the shape of their hands correctly for the ball, as well as kind of cementing good setting technique. And what else in this email? Um, trying to trying to get their setters to use use a very powerful wrist action to set the ball and minimize some of the body, um, body motion. And um, asked us to examine this question today, and we're excited to do that for our viewers. So um, we're gonna take August and Jordan over here to the wall for a minute. So Jordan and August are gonna demonstrate some of the things we do with our younger setters, just dribbling against the wall here with the, with the basketball. And they're gonna do a couple different um, wall patterns that we use. And I think we're using a Rawlings um, women's basketball size. So this is a smaller basketball than like a regulation or a men's size basketball. But I, I believe it's the college women's size ball. So these are a couple little wall patterns that we do with the volleyball usually. Great, go ahead and switch. Like I said, these are usually patterns that we do with volleyballs um, with our younger setters. switch. Uh, I'm actually a little leery to have them set the basketball because it is significantly heavier than a volleyball. But this is also one of the drills that um, our viewers said that they use. And so I just wanted to have our setters do this. And we'll do, let's do 30 repetitions of this. The other thing that we're gonna be talking about later, um, I, I hate to use just anecdotal evidence as a coach. So I, I um, inquired with our strength and conditioning coach, Billy Glisson, who, has a, who holds a master's degree in exercise science about what he thought of this idea from a purely training standpoint. And we're gonna be examining some of the feedback that he gave me today uh, over the phone. And that's the last one, good. And Jordan, step in and set. August, you're gonna pass. We're just gonna do 10 repetitions. Just alternate your set front and back. both these young ladies if they had ever trained with basketballs in earlier in their setting career and they both had a little bit um, so just kind of give me your impression um, we obviously don't train with basketballs here but what's your general impression of kind of training as a, with a basketball as part of setting do you see benefits potential upside downside um I could see this working if you needed a hitter or a setter that needed to push the ball out more because it's weighted. And then you would go to a lighter weighted ball, but other than that, I I don't really see the, the, the purpose, I guess. Okay. August, what about you? Um, I'm also on the same point. If you need somebody to push the ball out more, it helps train um, strength-wise, I guess, but I think the only thing effective with it is developing a motor pattern and just getting used to how your hands are supposed to feel, but I don't think it helps as much as it 
like other training techniques could. Okay, so so you think that the weighted ball might help actually feel something about the technique? Yeah. Okay. Good. I think that's a valid point. You both mentioned um, maybe it might help develop some power in um, in setting the ball. How much power do you need to set the ball from 15 to 18 feet to go out to the sideline? Not very, not very much power. Not very much. So what, what power would you be trying to generate? I guess just if you need to develop your wrist strength. I mean... Okay. Wrist strength? Uh, if your setter is struggling with pushing it out to the outside hitter, training with the basketball might allow them to, you know, put more effort or more muscle behind the ball. So that way when they set a real ball, it'll still be pushing it or push out even more than it what it was okay that's interesting and I think that I think that coaches might think similar things as my two um, setters are thinking let's walk over here to the board and I'd like you gals to come over here as well so the question today is training setters with a basketball benefits um, potentially downsides potentially so I've got like a list of pro and cons here um, one of the pros that we saw potentially and like I told you I, I taught with our strength and conditioning coach Billy Glisson today, uh, he thought potentially as a warm-up it might be a good drill. It's a heavier ball and um, warming setters up, it might be okay, but he felt the, the ball would have to be the same size as a volleyball. The motor pattern for setting is very specific as it is in any skill, so the slightly bigger ball would change the motor pattern slightly and in a way that we don't want. So his, uh, his feeling was that it might be okay as a warm-up, but the, but the ball, the heavier ball you're using would have to be the same size as the volleyball. He also felt that potentially the added weight, something exactly what August said, may help an athlete feel something about technique that you're trying to drive home um, with them. So those were the pros as um, he was giving me today. And like I told you earlier, he's got a master's degree in exercise science. So he under, really understands the ins and outs of training the most effective way. The cons that, that he um, relayed to me, that the muscle recruitment is going to be too high because the basketball is so much heavier than a volleyball, the motor units, the, the motor units are gonna be in, um, engaged, or the muscle fiber that's gonna be engaged to send the ball any place is gonna be much greater than it's gonna be with a volleyball, which is so much lighter. And he, he said, you know, you have to remember that setting is a fine motor skill. We're trying to really control the ball someplace with tempo and speed. It's not a gross motor skill. If we, we had too much weight, to the, um, to the motion of setting, we're going to recruit too many muscle fibers and turn it into more of a gross motor skill and we're going to lose some of that fine control. Another thing, another con that um, he relayed to me was speed of delivery. The ball is so much bigger and so much heavier that it could actually slow down the delivery that we want and the delivery we want is to be very quick and very light on the ball. And it could also change their technique because it's heavier. They might alter something about their, their release and their delivery that we really don't want to, um, to facilitate the heavier ball. So, and of course it may affect their control like I mentioned earlier. So we saw these as, as pretty big cons um, as far as whether we would use it or not. I think it's important to remember that we're trying to affect the neuromuscular system and the coordination of the move when it comes to setting. So whether it's setting against the flow, coming off the net, staying on the ground, or being in the air, we're really trying to affect a neuro system, and we're not trying to affect a gross motor pattern. And people often think that, well, I've got to get my setters stronger, so I'll I'll put a heavy ball in their hands and that'll make them stronger. And really, it's kind of a false assumption uh, we feel. It's really about synchronizing the neural system. So a setter is maybe not using all of her strength because she's mistiming her legs with her release. That could be, that could be a reason why she can't set the ball here. She can't set the ball to a certain, um, to a certain place. And uh, more muscles will be recruited if they're needed. So as people move away from their target zone, now they're gonna, it's going to require more muscles to send the ball out. It's going to change a little bit of the coordination. More muscle fiber is going to be recruited. So if you want your setters to set 
better balls from further off the net, then put them off the net and let them learn the neuromuscular pattern that it's going to take and how much muscles they need to incorporate to send the ball out there. So now, so now that we have the, the information from our strength coach, and you both know him and you know how effective he is in the, in the, in the ideas of training effectively, um, what do you think as you listen to that, that information? I think it makes more sense that like it would be, as you said, a neuro system instead of a growth system because it's so like precise, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And since nothing in setting is ever like perfect, you can't just control setting a basketball from like one spot or two spots. And I think that since we've never done it before, it's hard to compare, I guess. Sure. But from what we've done, just repping those different spots and the unpredictable passes, I think you develop your own sense of how much muscle you need to put into it. And exactly. Instead of working with something that is a different variable other than a volleyball. That's an interesting point. We're introducing a different variable here, a new variable, right? And the variables that we're trying to the variables we're trying to work with are being in different areas of the floor and setting the ball with speed and accuracy so we don't fly it too far or too short and you're trying to learn how much mus how many muscles to use as you move it in different areas of the floor and coordinate them. That's an interesting point. What about you, August? I'd have to agree just uh, in the sense of your equation for setting is like this is what gives you your best results and now you've added more variables in it with training with the basketball and it's just going to I feel like there's so many flaws in it and like the cons with like the speed and the muscle that's needed for it that it's not going to be as effective. And that's what we're trying to find. We're not trying to say things are right or wrong. We're trying to look at things as what's more effective than something else because lots of things can be effective. There's lots of ways to be successful. Um, we feel here that this is not something that we would use for the, for the reasons that we've outlined. And just Jordan, just step over here. Step back. Great. So um, I'm sure you guys are wondering, um, you know, uh, who Billy Glisson is. You can check him out at this website, PowerCore360.com. Um, he does a lot of work with volleyball attacking, and um, it's a real interesting website. And I talked to him today and said he might get some emails from some of our viewers. He, he's more than happy to take them about this subject. And if any of our viewers have more questions that you'd like us to explore, you can send those to Steve Culpus at this email address. We would love your feedback we would love to hear from you guys and if we um, if we find something that we think um, is a good topic to view then we'll do it just like this thank you very much